Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. You may recall that a couple of years ago I made a series of videos, I think it was 19 or so altogether, about the Inventables X-Carve CNC. It was a small CNC designed for the hobbyist, the school, the training establishment, uh, and yet it was a very capable machine. Now since then, Inventables have redesigned the machine, taking account of a lot of uh, feedback from various customers and people like myself. And they've now got a new series of machines. To start with, they come in three sizes rather than two. So you can have the 500mm, 750mm or the 1000mm size bed. Now, I've been sent by Inventables the 750mm machine. It comes in component form just like its predecessor and I'm going to be assembling this in a series of videos which I'll try and release about one every week if I can uh, until the machine is fully built. And when it's built, I'll put it through its paces. Now you may recall that the original machine was a pretty capable beast and here is uh, one of the examples of a bit of, of CNC work that I did with that machine. But now we've got a whole bunch of additional features and I'll try and point these out as we go through. But there are things like the X controller and that's the, the one box that controls everything and it's got the emergency stop button on top. That's now standard. Uh, the gantry is now much more rigid and they've improved the pulley system and the belt system and so on. And on top of that, their homegrown application easel which is free to all users uh, has been improved a lot. Uh, I've not looked at it again, I will do uh, once this machine is finished and so we should expect to see a great deal of improvements. Now I'm going to be following the XCARV instructions which are on their website page by page. I'm not going to miss anything out, I'm going to go through it. If I come across anything which I think is a little odd I'll explain it to you uh, to make it just a bit clearer. So that's on my computer there. And the very first thing uh, we're uh, starting with, according to the instructions, is the baseboard and the rail kit. Now do take care when you're doing the unpacking that you don't accidentally throw away any of the bits and pieces with the wrapping. Now these are w components are well attached to their uh, main parts, but just in case, be very careful. Right, I've now checked all of the parts and what I did was I printed off uh, the relevant pages from the instructions uh, and the relevant pages for the 750mm uh, machine which I've got. Um, and the only issue I found was that with the 750mm sideboard kit there was an item number 30517-11 threaded insert M5 well, um, it's, there should be 12 of them. I think it's just the wrong part number has been quoted because I've got a 30517-03, uh, which is exactly the same item. So uh, that's just a question of uh, the number being quoted incorrectly, I think. Now, the only item I struggled to find initially was the GT2 uh, belting uh, because the part number, uh, which was in the 750mm um, rail kit, um, uh, which is 26053-01, I couldn't find it. And then I looked in uh, the core components and I found uh, this with a different part number, but it is GT2 belting. It's got a different part number and the reason is that this is four meters and in the list for the 750 millimeter rail kit, it says look for a nine foot length. And so I think what's happened is a four meter length uh, maybe for the European market it's been swapped out. So I found it, it's no problem, everything is there. Now I'll give again some advice which I gave with my first x carve build and that is you find the components come in little packets, uh, they're really neat, they've got the part number on plus the description. If you are only required to take two or three out of a packet and there are more remaining, make sure you leave them in the packet uh, and that way you can always look again at the label to make sure you've got a a six millimeter rather than an eight millimeter screw or whatever it might be. So the first job according to the instructions is to do with the waste board. Um, you'll note, and if you've seen my earlier videos, you'll remember this is pretty similar to the uh, previous build. There are a whole bunch of holes in the uh, waste board into which you're gonna screw some inserts. And those inserts are so that you can clamp your work pieces down. Now I'm gonna turn it over. 
and my 64 holes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 by 8. And they're countersunk. Now for this you're going to need uh, a 5mm uh, hex key and I've put mine into my little Festool CXS because then I can uh, do it very quickly, very easily. Uh, the trick is to make sure you've got your drill absolutely vertical. Then make it go in. It then will stop at the appropriate point, provided you're not overdoing it with the uh, slipping clutch. And now uh, this is just a question of, is it upright? Yep, go. And the last hole. Right, uh, that's all 64 done. And I seem to have uh, seven uh, of these inserts left over. Um, there may be a reason for that, but I don't. I think the packet said they're supposed to be 64, so maybe it's just a variation in weight, uh, and so therefore I've got some extras. Uh, if, if you're one short, uh, please don't write to me. Uh, write to Inventables. As a part of good practice, I'm going to put those spare inserts back in the packet in case I need to look for something like that again. Right. The next thing to do is to locate uh, five pieces of rail and it's rail which is uh, square in section when you look at it at the end and there should be two long pieces and three shorter pieces. We're going to take one of the shorter ones that's 708 millimeters long and in order to get this in we're going to take a 12 millimeter screw we're using nine in total for this process and I'm going to feed it up from underneath here to that center hole just there and I'm going to now put one of these little rectangular nuts on there. That's just enough to start it off. And so through part of the uh, T track element, uh, we're going to feed that nut onto this rail. And we're going to do the same thing with the other two shorter lengths of rail. And they're going to go there and there. Now, if you're not sure which way round it is, uh, you see the pattern of these 64 screw inserts. Well, there's a big blank area here. Here we go. The rail in there. We're now going to take one of the uh, longer pieces and we're going to thread three of these uh, pre assembly nuts in. One, two, three. And it says then line these up with the three holes which are on this side. There's one, two, three. And then we're going to put three of these 12 millimeter screws in. Well, I think I'm going to use the same process that we did um, for, for these others. I'm going to have this just overhanging here. 12 millimeter screw going in. And I'm going to put one of these in here. And I'm doing it this way because I just think it's slightly easier to line everything up but I'm perhaps this is wrong but anyway this is where I'm going to do it right so there we go those are on so I'm now going to take this piece of rail and I'm going to feed it on I think that's probably the easiest way of doing it now in the instructions it says uh, these uh, long rails should overhang at the edge of the board so it's symmetrical and according to my very shiny ruler that means 30 millimetres on either side. And I've got the edge that's close to me flush uh, with uh, the edge of the board. And I'm now going to screw up those screws. To make this stage easier, I'm using just a little tool like this, uh, which is part of my uh, Wera kit, uh, which I have here. I've made a video about this uh, before really really useful piece of kit and I'm just feeling under there and just tighten that one I'm not going to tighten these a ridiculous amount I will tighten these up finally once the thing is up the other way right having just put one of these rails there um, I've now got three of these little um, pre-assembly nuts and three 12 millimeter screws left over put those safety to one side because now we're going to start using the 10 millimeter screws uh, and these corner brackets and the first thing to do is to put uh, three of these 
in pre-assembly nuts in here. And what we're, we're going to do now is to get these in place so that we can uh, put corner brackets in like so, like so, and like so. Uh, and that will then secure these bits of rail to this bit of rail. And of course, then we've got the fixing to the board as well. So just for now, I'm going to get this started. And remember, it's the 10 millimeter screws we're going to be using. Now, if you find it difficult to get the screw through here lined up with the, uh, the little flat nut, uh, then you can do the same trick that we did with the rails. And that is to screw it on a little bit and then feed that in from the end. And that will work just as well. So there I have, I've got those there. Now the next trick is this one's now fixed and I've got to bring these others up so that this is now flush here and this is now flush here. Uh, and this has to be a right angle. Now in order to get uh, something perfectly square when there's this thing in the way, it can be a little bit awkward. You can do it with an ordinary square, but not, not so well. Uh, I've made up a, a square and it is uh, absolutely perfectly square. Uh, it's made out of just two pieces of MDF uh, jointed together here. I'm treating it with care because that is an area of weakness. Uh, but as it's perfectly square, I can now use this uh, into these corners uh, to get everything absolutely spot on. And once you're happy that everything is absolutely square, uh, you can do the final tighten uh, with something like this. And this comes from that same uh, Werra kit. Uh, but don't over tighten these screws because uh, those uh, little uh, rectangular nuts are not that tough. But just nip it up. Now I can carefully turn this over and now do the final tighten on all these other ones. But again, don't over tighten because those little rectangular uh, nuts that we've got in there are not that strong. Well, there we go. That's uh, that first stage done.